and love in our souls, that we gather here with Jesse and Lisa, we gather here to celebrate this wonderful sacrament, the Holy Sacrament of Marriage. And so as we begin all of our prayers, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We gather here to celebrate the Word of God, to celebrate the Holy Eucharist, the body and blood, soul and divinity of Christ Jesus, to celebrate this wonderful sacrament of marriage. The Last Supper, certainly Jesus gave us his body and blood, but he celebrated wedding at Cana when he blessed uh, the water and changed it into wine. And so today he blesses both of your lives and changes them in profound ways so that you are no longer two, but one in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. O oh God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadow the sacrament of Christ and his church, grant, we pray, to these your servants that what they receive in faith they may live out in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We listen to God's holy word. reading from the book of Sirach. Bless the husband of a good wife, twice lengthened are his days. A worthy wife brings joy to her husband, peaceful and full is his life. A good wife is a generous gift bestowed upon him who fears the Lord. Be he rich or poor, his heart is content and a smile is ever on his face. A gracious wife delights her husband, her thoughtfulness puts flesh on his bones. A gift from the Lord is her governed speech, and her firm virtue is a surpassing worth. Choicest of blessings is a modest wife, priceless her chaste soul. A holy and decent woman adds grace upon grace. Indeed, no price is worthy of her temperate soul. Like the sun rising in the Lord's heavens, the beauty of a virtuous wife is the radiance of her home. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I, show, I shall show you still a more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, it is not jealous, it is not pompous, it is not inflated, it is not rude. It does not seek its own interests, it is not quick-tempered, it does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, love never fails. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. There was a wedding in Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine without knowing where it came from, although the servants who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely an inferior one but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs in Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory, and his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. One of the things that we notice is that the celebration of life has moments of grace and certainly overflowing and abundant grace in this moment in time and this moment in history. This little church here uh, was built brick by brick, uh, the clay right from here uh, at Mattingly Settlement, 
And the folks laid the bricks um, 1856. And it has been vibrant ever since. All of the baptisms and the first communions and the confirmations and the weddings and the funerals, uh, these are the great moments of life. And so we gather here uh, to support um, Jesse and Lisa. We gather here to let them know that we are very much uh, with you. And this is a special time. It's very beautiful that Jesus chose, uh, his mother actually chose for him, uh, his first public miracle was at the wedding feast at Cana. You notice that those huge jars, my goodness, they weighed, uh, held 20 to 30 gallons. Um, they were empty. Sometimes uh, in the course of life, some rituals, sometimes the faith grows empty, and they should have been full. And so by Jesus telling them to fill them up, he was saying, uh, we're doing something new here, and that's what we have today. And so, very quietly and discreetly, he changed uh, the water into wine. Well, he does the same thing for us uh, at the Holy Mass. He changes the wine into his blood. The bread that we have, he changes into his body. And so we believe in the body and blood, the soul and divinity of Christ. That's the bedrock of who we are. And so, life it's not really just the big moments, uh, the monumental uh, uh, events. It's everyday living lived well. Uh, one of the Trappist monks, uh, Thomas Merton, said that, you know, our lives are to be uh, able to take in the gifts that God is always giving us. Uh, he wants to shower us with his gifts. Uh, the trouble is sometimes we're so distracted with everything, uh, we are so preoccupied uh, we are concentrating on self. St. Augustine said the greatest sin is selfishness, uh, that we don't see the lavish uh, display of goodness that God is always giving us. Uh, you know, the Jewish people have an expression, lachaim, uh, to life. And they also say, a little wine is fine. Well, he gave them a lot. And so Jesus is not stingy, but he represents a God who is not stingy. It's not Lisa do 50% and Jesse do 50%. It's both of you give 100%. Give all you are. And when we give, God will bless all the actions, uh, what's in our hearts, a hundredfold. It's a generous God, uh, overflowing, uh, tremendous and just like today, which is perhaps the most beautiful day uh, so far of 2018, the sun is shining brightly. Well, that sun of God should shine brightly. Pope Francis says the radiant joy of Jesus should be with us all the time in the people that we meet. You know, we're in the Easter season, and the Easter season is about hallelujah. The Easter season is about resurrection. It's about hope. It's about transformation. The Easter season is looking forward to the 50th day of Easter. You know, we had 40 days of Lent, but 50 days of Easter. Why is that? Because we await the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has already been poured into our hearts at baptism. At Pentecost, uh, there's this release of all these gifts. Uh, you know, they're listed in the scriptures. Think about uh, Galatians, uh, you know, St. Paul speaks, love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, long-suffering, courage, purity, all of these gifts God is giving us. Uh, Isaiah the prophet talks about other gifts, and not just the fruits of the Spirit, but wisdom. Lady Wisdom danced before God at the time of creation uh, and saw that it was good. Understanding. You know, Jesse and Lisa, you will, uh, you know, in your hearts, have understanding for one another. You know, each one of us uh, looks at things a little differently. That's the beauty of life. Uh, you know, we can have four people. That's why we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John giving us the Gospels. Each evangelist has, uh, you know, a little bit per perspective uh, that they share with us. And that's uh, what makes the Gospels so rich. Wisdom, understanding, counsel. 
counsel. You'll, you'll be there for one another, to help one another in all the challenges that you have, but in good times and in bad. Wisdom, understanding, counsel. Fortitude is just another name for courage, uh, strength. Uh, what did the lion ask for? He asked for courage when he could have asked for anything. When I was at my ordination mass, uh, Bishop Edward Herman said, I pray that you have courage uh, to stand up boldly for the faith. And what is our faith? Well, it's really encapsulated in the uh, Beatitudes. Um, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And that's not just pie in the sky after we die. That is for us right now, right here, uh, to see God present, uh, not only in one another, but in ourselves and in the body and blood and the soul and divinity of Christ. So wisdom and understanding and counsel and fortitude, knowledge, piety, reverence and fear of the Lord. So these things uh, God will shower upon us in great abundance. I've enjoyed working with Jesse and Lisa and the two families, uh, the Anders and the Effingers, uh, and you today come together. You enrich one another. Uh, you will enrich uh, all of us by not only sharing the meals and the lives and the stories, but in sharing the children. Uh, that will follow. We ask God uh, to bless the marriage, uh, to bless with children and, and enjoy one another uh, and be friends with one another. And so I think that we are ready to invite Jesse and Lisa to the altar. Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's minister and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ Jesus abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. Jesse and Lisa, have you come here freely to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? We have. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live. We are. are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? We are. We are. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your right hands and declare your consent before God and his church. Jesse, do you take Lisa for your lawful wife to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death do you part? Lisa, do you take Jesse for your lawful husband to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish until death do you part. I do. May the Lord bless you, for you have been consecrated now, and God is with you. We now have the ring. You notice not only the beautiful blue flowers here and the Paschal candle, but also the holy water, the baptismal water. Tomorrow evening after Mass, we'll baptize one of my cousins. Uh, this is a family celebration in a family church. 
And so with this blessed water, this Easter water, we have blessed these rings, which you will give to each other as a sign of love and fidelity. Lisa, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Lisa, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesse, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. Jesse, receive this ring as a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. And of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now invite Lisa's brother to come up and share with us all that we will pray for in blessing this wonderful couple. Dear brothers and sisters, as we call to mind the special gift of grace and charity by which God has pleased to crown and consecrate the love of our sister Lisa and our brother Jesse, let us commend them to the Lord that these faithful Christians, Lisa and Jesse, newly joined in holy matrimony, may always enjoy health and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Relatives and friends, gather here at St. Mary this afternoon at the Divine Mercy Hour, and for all who have assisted this couple, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord Jesus is calling to another state in life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all families throughout the world, for lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our families who have passed from this world, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Catholic Church, the holy people of God, and for unity among all Christians, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Graciously pour out upon this husband and wife, O Lord, the spirit of your love, to make them one heart and one soul, so that nothing whatever may divide those you have joined, and no harm come to those you have filled with your blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever.
by the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. My brothers and sisters, pray that this our sacrifice may be acceptable to the Lord our God. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you willed that the human race, created by the gift of your goodness, should be raised to such high dignity that in the union of husband and wife, you might show a true image of your love. For those you created out of charity, you call to the law of charity without ceasing and grant them a share in your eternal charity. And so the sacrament of holy matrimony as the abiding sign of your own love consecrates the love of man and woman through Christ our Lord. Through him with the angels and all the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Frederick, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Holy Father, who formed man in your own image, male and female, you created them, so that as husband and wife, united in body and heart, they might fulfill their calling in the world. O God, who to reveal the great design you formed in your love, willed that the love of spouses for each other should foreshadow the covenant that you graciously made with your people, so that by fulfillment of the sacramental sign, the mystical marriage of Christ with his church might become manifest in the union of husband and wife among your faithful. Graciously stretch out your right hand over these your servants, Jesse and Lisa. We pray and pour into their hearts the power of the Holy Spirit. Grant, O Lord, that as they enter upon this sacramental union, they may share with one another the gifts of your love, and by being for each other a sign of your presence, become one heart and one in mind. May they also sustain, O Lord, by their deeds the home they are forming, and prepare their children to become members of your heavenly household by raising them in the way of the gospel. Graciously crown with your blessings your daughter Lisa, so that by being a good wife and mother, she may bring warmth to her home with a love that is pure and adorn it with welcoming graciousness. Bestow a heavenly blessing also, O Lord, upon Jesse, your servant, that he may be a worthy, good and faithful husband and a provident father. Grant, Holy Father, that desiring to approach your table as a couple joined in marriage in your presence, they may one day have the joy of taking part in your great banquet in heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of his peace. You're lovely in every way. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ Jesus keep me safe for eternal life. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ. The body of Christ, the blood of Christ.
Lisa and Jesse have a great devotion to Our Lady, and certainly uh, there are three grottos here, uh, one in the entrance, uh, one in our St. Francis Abbey Monastery Sanctuary, and one uh, at the entrance to our Family Life Center. You're all invited uh, to join us uh, for the celebration that continues this glorious day. Uh, the Lord has provided a breeze, and a breeze, a wind, is a sign of the Holy Spirit. Uh, a rush of the Holy Spirit, and certainly water and fire, uh, all of the symbols are very much around us. And it was the disciples on the road to Emmaus that recognized Jesus and the breaking of the bread, uh, and they said that their hearts were on fire as the scriptures uh, unfolded before them. And I see that same zeal and enthusiasm. The word enthusiasm comes from the Greek anteosmos, which means to praise God, in the very fabric of your being in your lives. Um, this holy church, you have chosen three o'clock for your wedding rehearsal, the Divine Mercy Hour, and you have also chosen three o'clock for your wedding on a Friday. Friday, which symbolizes Good Friday, the tremendous love that Jesus had in pouring out his blood and sharing uh, that tremendous outflowing of his uh, spirit, his love, uh, the grace that we receive. And so today, uh, as we gather, we have one of three uh, oil paintings of the divine mercy of Jesus uh, in our church. One is at Stockbridge, Massachusetts, one is in the Vatican, and one is here, a great devotion that we love, Eucharistic adoration and benediction, divine mercy, uh, all of the blessings uh, that are uh, given to us by uh, Jesus, by uh, this wonderful little Polish sister, Sister Faustina. And so all the saints are surrounding both of you. All the graces are yours in abundance. And so we continue this celebration as we conclude with our final prayer and our final blessing. Let us stand. By the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, accompany with your loving favor what your providence you have instituted, so that as to make of one heart in love those you have already joined in this holy union and replenished with the one bread and the one chalice through Christ our Lord. Amen. And I invite you, Jesse and Lisa, to the altar for your final blessing and all of our wonderful blessings that shower upon you. May God, the all-powerful Father, grant you his joy and bless you in your children together. Amen. May the holy begotten Son of God stand by you with compassion in good times and in bad together. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit of God always pour forth his love into your hearts together. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is my great joy to present to you for the very first time, Mr. and Mrs. Lisa and Jesse Anders. <laughs>